OK, hi there and welcome to the first of two videos looking at the economics of renewable energy. In the first one, we're going to be taking a look at some of the key trends in renewable energy, but fo uh, crucially focusing on the extent to which this is a topic that is capable of being a synoptic topic for examiners to use in economic papers. Well, Britain generated more electricity from renewable and nuclear energy in 2017 than from gas and coal, and that's the first year that low carbon resources have met most of the UK's power needs. So this session we're going to look at some of the synoptic aspects of the growth of renewable energy, with particular reference to the UK, but also linking to aspects of development economics. Rarely a day goes by without a cluster of news reports on this very fast-changing renewable energy market. Indeed, for many energy economists, 2017 marked a significant year in the drive towards cleaner, low-carbon energy. And a lot of investment in renewables is happening in developing emerging economies. For some people, this is going to be a transformational in terms of their growth prospects. Renewable energy is undoubtedly a very good synoptic topic for economics examiners to use. According to Bloomberg New Energy Finance, renewable energy sources are set to represent almost three quarters of the $10 trillion the world will invest in new power in, until 2014. And thanks to the, the falling unit cost for solar and wind power and the growing role for batteries, including electric vehicle batteries, there's a, a, an increasing role for renewable energy consumption in, in balancing energy supply and demand. And you can see this from the chart. There's an exponential growth in world renewable energy consumption since 1998. And it does appear that takeoff has really happened in the last two or three years. What is significant is the rate at which new energy sources are growing. Uh, in fact, in the last two years, the annual growth of renewable energy is about 10%. And, uh, you know, Partly subsidies are helping that. Over 140 countries now support their renewable energy sectors. But as economies of scale take hold, the increasing renewable capacity becomes more commercially viable. And battery technology is set to advance rapidly, capable of storing a lot of renewable energy. The chart on the left-hand side here, I think, is significant. It's a projection from BP. The dotted line is where we are now in 2017, of course. Projection of what's going to happen to three things. First of all, follow the yellow line. That shows the projected level of GDP in the European Union on an index basis. And that's obviously set to rise as the European Union economy grows. But then look at the other two lines. They're heading in the opposite direction. So the amount of energy consumed is, is projected to fall. And therefore, we're seeing a gap a growing divergence between energy consumption and GDP. In other words, energy per unit of GDP is falling. We call that a decline in energy intensity. And follow the black line, which shows the projected level of carbon emissions, again on an index basis. And that's forecast, this is clearly a projection, to fall even further. So therefore, we're expecting Europe to make a significant move towards a lower carbon economy. The carbon intensity of the economy is set to fall. Now, if Europe can achieve this, then that's a, 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 the sense that it's decoupling the link between growth of GDP and the level of carbon emissions. And that will clearly be welcome news for those people who, who really fear the impact of, of global warming. On the right hand side, we see the projections for where the European Union will get its energy from. And not dissimilar to other countries, the, the share of energy from coal is set to fall rapidly, as well as, as, well as oil. Uh, gas declining, but renewables picking up quite strongly. Which business manufactures and sells this next generation solar roof? I often ask uh, students this question, and many of them actually come up with the right answer, which is Tesla. People often associate Tesla with Tesla Motors and space exploration. But Tesla has a significant solar power business. And the solar panels that we've known and loved in the UK for many years are really, you know, 10 years old, essentially, the next generation of solar roofs will be much more, I think, visually appealing and also much more energy efficient. The game changer really is the power inverter. We see a power inverter on this slide from the, uh, from the Tesla website. So a power inverter is a means of converting the energy created by solar cells and by wind turbines and connecting that to the grid in order to, to power up your car or to power your washing machine or your household energy system. So power inverters will become significant means by which households can both generate 
their own energy, so roofs, solar walls, and then store their energy. And this is a significant game changer in the renewable energy market. What you'll see in the next five, ten years is many more households being energy generators as well as energy consumers. It's a big threat to the traditional vertically integrated oil companies. Tesla, of course, is at the forefront, along with companies like Huawei Technologies and Panasonic, in developing the next generation of, of batteries, which can store a lot more of the renewable energy. And this can help address the intermittent supply problem that you can never be totally 100% guaranteed how much renewable energy you're going to get from wind and solar. One of the big economic aspects of the rise of renewables is the fall in the unit cost. This is sometimes called the learning curve effect. There is something in renewable energy called Swanson's Law, which is that a 20% there, there is a 20% reduction in unit cost of solar energy for each doubling of capacity. We see that in a projection for North America, and economists would call this the learning curve. So the, the concept behind the experience curve, or the learning curve, is that the more experience a business has in producing a particular product, and the bigger its capacity, then the lower is its unit cost. And the BP review uh, projects that solar costs will continue to follow the, follow the learning curve, with the module cost falling by around 24% with every doubling of cumulative capacity. And the, the learning curve is essentially a story about economies of scale, but crucially businesses who build up experience, they build up intelligence in how to manufacture, they can improve their production techniques, and the workers become more skilled and experienced in bringing products to market. So this is a key idea in explaining how the unit cost of renewable energy is falling. What is potentially significant about Clayhill Farm in Bedfordshire? Well, it looks a fairly nondescript picture. But actually, Clayhill Farm in Bedfordshire, in the UK, is the first subsidy-free solar farm in Britain. And the crucial technology lies at the bottom of the picture. Can you see those big five batteries? They're capable of storing solar power when the sun is hot and shining. It does happen in Bedfordshire, believe me. And this helps, to, again, to address the intermittency problem. By the way, Huawei Technologies from China built the panels and the batteries. Interesting example of globalisation. Take you through a few little stories and the little headlines just to try and explain and, and, and showcase to you why renewable energy is a really good synoptic topic. In 2017, Britain had its first ever coal free day, the first time since the Industrial Revolution that we didn't have to use any coal in uh, maintaining the amount of power and energy generated in, in the power system. In Britain in 2017, renewable output grew by 27% over 2016. And that was something like 96 terawatt hours of electricity. Now that sounds huge. Actually, it's only enough to power the whole of Great Britain in the year 1958. But we are moving towards a much less significant role for coal. Well, what are some of the synoptic economic themes you might want to think about? There's obviously the issue to do with the trade balance. Britain is a net importer of coal now, as domestic production has declined. So a fall in the use of coal might improve our trade balance. Clearly, there are externality issues here, market failure issues, as we move away from coal, hopefully towards cleaner coal technologies, but a move away from dirtier fossil fuels towards renewables. Equally, there are some structural changes in the labour market in the UK. Most of the coal mining jobs have gone, certainly in terms of deep cast mines. There are still some open cast mines available. But again, there's an issue to do with structural changes in employment and the risk, for example, of workers in the coal power generators becoming structurally unemployed. And the other macro synoptic theme is, of course, the changing mix of our energy in, in the UK. Here's a, another recent article. Uh, President Trump has imposed uh, a tariff, import tariffs, not just on washing machines, but also on imported solar panels, mainly from China. And again, think about this in a synoptic way. Think about some of the economic themes and topics you might have covered as part of your course as that, that you might want to bring to the, to the table. So the economics of protectionism, the economics of dumping, the allegation that China has been importing, so exporting solar panels to the states at below cost. Think about the consequences of tariffs for consumer and producer welfare in terms of consumer surplus, producer surplus, and the real incomes of people who, who uh, both make the, the solar uh, panels and, and the solar industry in the, the United States and those people who consume the energy. You might always even, even think about bringing some game theory into your discussion, the prisoner's dilemma, uh, where 
uh, the extent to which uh, protectionism marks a movement away from cooperative behaviour in terms of trade relationships. Let's take a, a focus on developing countries. And one of the big issues in 2017, undoubtedly, was that the amount of money being pumped into renewable energy in countries like India and Bangladesh, amongst others, and quite a few sub-Saharan African countries, has significantly lamped up. And again, if one thinks about synoptic themes here, the extent to which renewable energy could be transformational, or significant at least, in promoting human development at the base level. Uh, the extent to which renewable energy offers opportunities for social entrepreneurship. Can it raise productivity and farming to lift per capita incomes? The extent to which renewable energy providing cheaper, cleaner, more affordable energy might help to address fundamental gender inequality issues in, in, in rural areas and families. And the extent to which renewable energy, if it can be developed, might reduce countries' aid dependency. There are some big themes here. But what I'm trying to suggest to you is that renewable energy as a topic has quite a significant synoptic element to it. One more, here's another uh, recent news article. Australia's solar power boom could almost double capacity in a year. And again, here's a, a really good example of, of where investment in solar power has significant economic effects. What are some of the synoptic themes? Well, link this into long and aggregate supply or shifts in the PPF. The extent to which a country is scaling its renewable energy can become more cost competitive over time, particularly if it can wean itself off potentially more expensive fossil fuels in the long run. What are the consequences in the short term and going forward for the living costs of people? And again, big changes in Australian economy potentially in terms of the structural change of GDP and maybe a movement away from coal mining and changes in, in the pattern of employment. Well, hopefully you get from this the idea that there's a lot of synopticity and what I tried to do in the here and this slide is just think about, well, some areas where renewable energy has an economic perspective. So externalities diagrams would come into it, wouldn't it? The costs, the private and the external costs and benefits of renewables compared, for example, to um, generating energy through using coal and gas. The impact of investment in the industry, both on aggregate demand and aggregate supply. We've talked about the extent to which solar panel and uh, wind turbines, etc., are now growing in industry, and therefore suppliers can exploit economies of scale. The pace of innovation in a market it can be linked to the concept of dynamic efficiency. Changes in energy demand and consumption and production will affect the trade balance. Can the UK, for example, which currently runs a significant energy trade deficit, can the UK reduce that by increasing its own domestic production of renewable energy? How will renewable energy change the pattern of jobs in the economies? Which regions stand to gain most? The evidence in the UK, for example, is that a lot of the investment in renewable energy has happened in eastern regions like Yorkshire and Humberside and the east coast of Scotland and eastern England. And that could have a significant regional economic effect through, for example, multiplier consequences. The extent to which markets are becoming more contestable. So particularly, for example, in the battery market, Tesla is taking on Panasonic and Hitachi and many others. The market for energy is becoming more contestable, particularly when you have consumers able to generate their own energy. What about Brexit, for example? Britain has been part of the internal energy market of the European Union for many years. What will happen post-2019 to our uh, potential to import and export oil and gas and renewable energy at zero tariffs. And more generally, think about the big picture stuff, the really big picture stuff, the extent to which renewable energy can become a source of emerging comparative advantage. For example, for developing countries that might be able to both produce energy more cheaply and perhaps export the licenses and the technologies for a new style of renewable energy. The, the debate about the contribution that renewable energy can make to sustaining, sustaining and making human development more sustainable going forward. And the whole issue is to do with renewable energy and the whole process of globalisation. And as the world continues, ups and downs, of course, to globalise, as trade increases, as world population increases, where are where is the world going to get its energy from? And can we move collectively, globally, to a much lower carbon economy to ward off the real threats of climate change? Well, hopefully you can see here that there's a lot of economics when it comes to renewable energy. 
in the second video, which will be on YouTube, we'll look at some of the specific policies that the UK government has introduced to try and promote renewable energy from a UK perspective.